What's up guys? We are looking at another Masters of the Universe Classics figure today. Going back to Club Grayskull taking a look at Tongue Lasher. We've got another standard brown mailer box. We've got the He-Man logo on the top and then we've got the character name below. We of course have got that standard slip cover on the packaging that shows the jaw bridge from Castle Grayskull with the He-Man logo on the back side. We have got Tongue Lasher in that fantastic, fantastic open packaging with the jaw bridge wide open. You can see him there in the window. Windows on the side and the top of the packaging as well as some fantastic artwork of Tongue Lasher on the back with a brand new bio. So let's open this guy up and take a look. All right, guys, here is our Tongue Lasher out of the package. And this is a figure that, frankly, was probably always going to be my least favorite of the bunch just because of the design. He has got to have one of the most uninspired designs out of the wide array of Filmation characters. And to be honest, you know, if you saw my review of the Classics Tongue Lasher, you know that that's my Tongue Lasher. That's the one that I like, the Tree Frog version, not this guy. But how does this figure actually stack up? He's got some interesting things going on. There are some oddities about this figure as well. So we're gonna take a look at articulation first, and then we'll take a look at sculpt accessories. You know the drill. So as far as moving this guy around, he is, for the most part, kind of standard Masters of the Universe, but he does have some limitations, and I'm not really sure if it's actual issues with the figure or if it was intended. And most of that stems from the head. So the head, at least when I've got the standard head on, there is an extra head, and I'll talk more about, about the issue I have with that one later. Uh, you've got rotation, but you don't really have anything else. He does bobble because there is a ball peg in there, but similar to some of the Wave 1 Filmation figures from Super, from Super 7, it doesn't really stay. He basically is always kind of looking up. He's always looking at an angle, and his eyes are honestly a little bit of the problem. It makes it look like he's kind of staring off into space. Uh, this is his design. I mean, it's how his head is supposed to look, don't get me wrong. But if I could get him to look down a little bit more, I would be a lot happier, and he just can't. If you can even begin to get him to do it, he just pops right back up, and eventually he's going to be right about there at all times. So that is that is a bit of a bummer for me, personally. Arms go out. They rotate. We've got a bicep swivel. We've got single-jointed elbows, of course. We have got hinges and rotation at the wrist. And we do have some painted joints, so watch out. Not all of them are, like the wrist hinges aren't painted but the elbow hinges are painted, so you might see some flaking. I've already seen reports of that occurring. It's rather unavoidable when you paint a joint, but just keep that in mind. We do have a crunch, and he, let me take the jetpack off. He doesn't really go back, at least my figure doesn't, and I'm, frankly, I'm not going to force him, uh, but he stands up straight, and then he goes forward quite a bit, so that's all right. And I'm just gonna leave that off for now. We do have a waist twist. I had to break him up a bit. We do have a thigh cut. And this one is fine. This one over here, though, I think I need to heat him up because he's just, like, it just doesn't want to go. Kick forward, kick back. You can do the splits. That's the standard Motu Classics move. Single jointed knee. And then we've got a boot cut, shin swivel. And we've got hinge. Not so great on the backswing, but pretty good on the upward. And then, of course, we have the forward facing pin for rocker. So... I mean, it's pretty standard. There's nothing too crazy here. We're not exactly missing anything. The only thing that I have a problem with is whatever's going on with the head is a little annoying, mostly because his head is sculpted at an angle. So when he sits at an angle as well, he's just kind of staring off into space. It's hard to kind of get his eye line in the right position when you want to pose him looking at something because he's always just kind of staring. I don't know where he's staring. He's just off in space somewhere. Now, as far as sculpt and paint and all that good stuff, he is, for the most part, a pretty standard Motu Classics Filmation figure. There isn't a great deal going on here. If there's one thing I truly like about him is that the majority of this figure is a matte finish. So, you know, while I have issues with the Sorceress and her not having that all over, he is very matte, almost too matte in some cases. He looks kind of dusty sometimes. But he is, like I've already mentioned, you know, pretty uninspired, at least as far as I'm concerned, design. There's just not a lot going on here. He is a lizardy kind of dude. He has a really nice head sculpt. I mean, it's very much filmation accurate. I'm, I'm very happy with how it turned out. It looks fine. It's painted well. Uh, his head is just, you know, kind of an odd shape. And like I mentioned, it makes it kind of hard to point him in a direction because he's always staring off that way out to the sides. We've got the Horde logo painted on his chest. I do have a little bit of a red splotch right underneath the 
right wing on the screen. I'll probably have to, you know, see if I can scrape that off. He's got some brown furry loincloth, and he's got a red belt. We've got the mustard pants. There's a little bit extra plastic on the leg right here and a little scuffage from the loincloth on the top of the legs. Not a huge deal, but it's worth pointing out. We've got the blue uh, on the bracers, and then we've got the kind of blue monster feet down here, which look really good. I do, however, have a QC issue on this guy. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, it's, it's fixable, and just it's the exact same issue I had with my Sorcerer's figure. We have got a warped leg in the package. You can see that this leg is kind of going this way. And it's just, uh, it doesn't hinder him standing up or anything, and it doesn't make him look weird, but it definitely is, uh, you know, not correct. So I'll fix that. Again, I didn't, just like with Sorceress, I didn't want to fix every problem before doing the review, because it's worth pointing out and having, you know, the visual that, yeah, there is something slightly wrong. If there's one real problem I have with him, it's that, outside of the wonkiness of that head joint. But yeah, he's, he's you know, it's kind of a what you see is what you get figure. Of course, we do have some accessories to discuss, but he is really, really basic. He is, he is about as filmation as it gets, I would say. But the paint apps, for the most part, on this guy are pretty clean. I dig the matte look. It gives it that cartoon aesthetic. And, you know, he may not be my favorite character from a design standpoint, but I think they did a, did a pretty decent job translating this design into plastic. I just wish the head could look down. Now, as far as accessories goes, we've got a few. This guy doesn't have a ton of signature things. Uh, mostly, it's just the jetpack that I would consider to be his signature thing. And it just pegs into his back. It's red, white, and silver. Well, gray. And, uh, you know, it pegs in. I wish the peg was a little bit longer, like just a hair longer. I feel like it's not as secure as it should be because I've definitely knocked it out a few times. But if he's just standing there, it is fine. So, you know, there's that. We have got this kind of generic blaster pistol. It's a gray gun. It is a little difficult to actually get it into his hands, so my suggestion would be to heat up whatever hand you're going to use and pop it in there. The hands are incredibly rigid. Not to the point where I thought I was going to break them or anything, but I didn't want to heat them up to do it. I wanted to see exactly what it took to get that gun in there. And after doing it, my suggestion would be, yeah, heat him up. Uh, beyond that, though, he does have an extra head because, you know, it's a tongue lasher. That's his thing. I'm going to take this off because I'm probably going to knock it off in the process. So you can pop this head off. And it comes off pretty easily. Um, not too easily, so it's fine there. And this head, you know, it can he can rotate a little bit and he take it on and off. But we do have this head. I have a lot of trouble actually putting this on. Now, not, that's not to say it doesn't go on. I don't think I need to heat it up. But it goes on really, really tight. You know, something is not sized correctly, I would think. I think the socket in this head might be a hair too small because once it's on there, it doesn't want to do anything now. Like, I can't actually swivel him. He just sort of stays this way. Now, if you angle it when you put it on, he'll stay that way, but it's very difficult for me to actually twist this head, and he has no articulation with this. So that makes me think that something is either too big or too small. I'm assuming it's the socket in this because the standard head, you know, rotates just fine. He just doesn't have any up or down movement. So that that's kind of weird. Um, I don't really know for sure. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to really confirm or deny. I just know that that's what it does for me. Uh, as far as how it looks, I mean, it's pretty similar to what we have. It's basically the same the same head, except the mouth is slightly open and you've got the tongue coming out. Of course, there's no action feature or anything like that, but I do like this. I mean, this might be how I end up displaying him because I do like the tongue coming out of his mouth. I think it's well done and it very much looks the part as far as filmation accuracy goes. I just think there's something wonky going on once that head is on there. Because, you know, I feel a lot of resistance. I feel like that peg is going to snap, so I should probably stop doing that. And because we have to do it, we have got comparison between the Classics Tongue Lasher and our Filmation Tongue Lasher. And, you know, like I mentioned in the review for this guy not too long ago, they could not be further apart. There is no similarities between the two outside of the fact that, you know, you can pop the extra head on this one and he has his tongue sticking out. But they are not the same thing. They might as well be different characters as far as I'm concerned, and I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not alone. This is always going to be my preferred look for the character. This is definitely a look for him, and, you know, that's the way he looked in the show. I'm glad to have a figure of him. But this is the one that has the nostalgia for me because this is one of my favorite vintage toys. But yeah, there's a there's a distinct, distinct difference. I mean, I, I, I am hard-pressed to think of a figure that looks so wildly different. This one is pretty crazy. So there you go, guys. A look at the Super 7 Tongue Lasher figure. I am... I'm okay with this figure. He's not terrible, but he definitely has some issues compared to some of the other figures I've looked at already. 
And of course, I do think there is some sort of QC type issue going on with the head. And of course, I have an actual QC issue with that left knee joint where it's uh, kind of janky. Other than that, though, I think he looks the part for sure. I don't really have any crazy paint app issues. He looks fine. I like the matte finish to him. And he has all of the requisite accessories. He just doesn't have a ton of signature things outside of that uh, outside of that jetpack. So yeah, that's about it. That is going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Tongue Lasher Filmation figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.